वेलकम बैक टू माय टुडे सेशन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर शायंती चटर्जी एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ आईआईआरई कॉलेज हैदराबाद ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ जनरल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द फील्ड इन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स फील्ड इज अ कॉमन वर्ड इन द इन द इंजीनियरिंग सो व्हाट इज फील्ड व्हाट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ फील्ड एंड व्हाई डू वी नीड फील्ड we will discuss in today's session along with some uh, problems from this session problems and some important formula from this session so first we have to discuss what is the magnetic field or what is field a field is a function that specifies the quantity everywhere in a region or a space if we want to tell in a simple thing what is a field in an area everywhere where in a region or a space we can feel some force that area is known as a field a field is a special dis special distribution of a quantity in general it can be a scalar it can be a vector scalar means the field may have a certain direction uh, may not have a certain direction but vector field means the force will feel in a certain direction see we are giving one example while we are talking in a phone what is happening there is a tower you can see there is a tower and the sounds are coming from the tower to our phone so the trans this is the transmitter and the phone is the receiver and in between the sounds this area is known as the field we can give one more example say we have a uh, the uh, world uh, the mother earth has the gravitational force g so if we uh, throw a ball it will always come down due to the gravitational force so this is the field for the earth but if we throw a ball more than the escape velocity if it goes out of the uh gravitational field it will never come back so that is out of the field and where it can feel the force it is called the it is called the uh, field so similarly we will discuss about the electromagnetic field means due to the electric and magnetic effect if there is an area where it can feel some force is called the electro electromagnetic field so what is the classification of electromagnetic field actually field can be defined as the three parts first one is the electric field what is electric field electric field is due to the due to the charge it is called the electric field let us take an example say you have a capacitor and it has some charge accumulated in it so the area uh, across the capacitor is a perfect example of the electric field what is magnetic field magnetic field is due to the due to the magnet due to the magnet so it may be a natural magnet maybe some uh, uh, or some artificial magnet but the area it may uh, it may experience some repulsive force as well as attractive force but the area where any magnetic material or any other magnet feels some force is called the elect uh, magnetic field electromagnetic field is a summation of the electric field as well as the magnetic field so what does it do means say we are taking one example of a motor so in the motor there is a there is a current carrying conductor and when the current flows through the current carrying conductor it will create some north pole and south pole so this is a field which is an interaction of the electric field as well as an 
magnetic field so this is called the electromagnetic field electromagnetic field is two types one is called the time independent another one is the called the time varying time independent um, time independent is due to the dc current or we can tell some the direct charge or the current is fixed and there is no change of the poles time varying field means it is due to the ac ac current that the north pole and south pole are changing continuously so this is a time varying electromagnetic field and this is a time dependent and both are making the electromagnetic field maximum electric apparatus like transformers motors everything works on the principle of the electromagnetic field so maximum use we can get the electromagnetic field in our uh electrical apparatus so first we will start with the electric field so what first and another important thing is the vector field so we, while we are discussing about the vector field the another term will come into our mind what is a scalar field so a scalar is usually said to be a physical quantity that only has magnitudes for no other characteristics it has some magnitude but vector field is a quantity what we know we have the both direction and uh, magnitude and the direction so what is the example of the scalar field scalar is the speed work done temperature mass electric charge so these are the scalar field what is the vector velocity force electric field so as i told it has some magnitude and it has some direction for example say we are one a car is moving so the car is moving with a speed of 50 km that is the scalar quantity so it has a magnitude only but if i tell the car is moving from north to south or the from hyderabad to kolkata so it has some certain direction so this is called a vector so speed is a scalar quantity but velocity is a vector quantity why because the velocity has certain direction vector is a uh, velocity is a vector quantity now we will first discuss about the electric field as we told that the electric field is based nothing but a vector field electric field is defined as the force acting on a test particles divided by the charge of the test particles so electric field is nothing but the we can tell that the force per unit charge if we keep a unit positive charge the area where it can uh, where if we bring the another charge nearby the area where it can force it can experience some force is called the electric field so electric field is defined as the force acting on a test particle due to a unit positive charge or divided by the charge of the test particle so e is equal to a by q not as we know force is a um, force is a vector quantity so electric field should be a vector quantity and elect so we can see there is a positive charge is q not and the field is due to the q charge so if we check the what is the electric field e is equal to a by q not so if we discuss it more uh, details that what is force according to the coulomb's law it will be q q not by 4 pi epsilon r square and what is the direction direction is the a r hat the direction is the r hat means the direction in the uh, uh, in the radial radially so what is the e e is equal to a by q not so what will be the value of e e value will be q by 4 pi epsilon r square 
a r 4 pi epsilon r square a r and this is known as the and what is the a r a r is the unit vector and a r is equal to r vector divided by mod of r vector so this is called the unit vector generally we do write any direction in the unit vector already we have discussed so what is the superposition theorem this is discussed also in the last class it is a quick recap so what is the electromagnetic field electromagnetic field is the summation of all the individual charges so e is equal to we can write e actually one charge cannot be possible in one area if we are thinking about the current carrying conductor it con it consists of a number of charges so we can think that the number of charges is equal to q1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 summation of qi divided by ri square means q1 by r0 square plus q2 by r2 square plus q3 plus r3 square like this. This is the total intensity of the electric power. Let's solve a problem. Say there is one charge q2 whose value is 0 0.12 micro coulomb in, uh, is located in the vacuum. Vacuum means epsilon r is equal to it is the 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12. Find the force on q2 due to q1. And what is the value of q1? q1 value is given as the q1 value is given as the 100 micro coulomb. So q1 value is find the force on q2. Okay. So q1 value is 100 micro coulomb. Micro means 10 to the power minus 6. And what is the q2 value? 0 0.12 into 10 to the power minus 2. We have here we have this is the p1 value and this is the p2 value and distance there uh, the value of r is not given we have to calculate the value of r so what is p1 so first we have to check the force on q2 the force the force on q2 due to Q1. So this is our P2 point and P2 point is minus 0 0.03 comma 0 0.01 comma 0 0.04. And what is the value of P1? 0 0.03, 0 0.08 and 0 0.02. So, if we write it in the uh, form of the vector, it will come minus 0.03 ax. Ax means unit i or unit vector along the ax plus 0.01 ay. Plus 0.04 az. What is the value? 0.03 ax plus 0.08 ay plus 0.02 az. So what is the value of r12? r12 means the final is the p2 minus of p1. The value of p2 Find the force on Q2. So, final value is P2 due to P1 minus P1. So, minus 0 0.3 AX minus 0 0.3 AX minus 0 0.6 AX 0 0.0 AY 0 0.08 AY. So, it will be minus 0 0.07 AY. 0.04 az minus 0.02 so 
प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू ए जेड जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू ए जेड सो वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ आर वन टू नाउ वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए आर व्हाट इज ए आर ए आर इज इक्वल टू आर वन टू डिवाइडेड बाय मोड ऑफ आर वन टू आर वन टू वैल्यू ऑलरेडी वी गॉट What is mod of R one two? Mod of R one two means a squared plus b squared, a x squared plus a y squared plus a z squared. So root of zero point zero six whole square plus minus zero point zero seven whole square plus zero point zero two whole square. So we got all the value. We got the value of Q one, Q two. We got four pi epsilon. Here vacuum means eight point eight five four into ten to the power minus four, and we got R one two square. What is R one two? We got. So what is R one two square? We will get this also. So if we put the value. we can get the value we can calculate the force and the force value will come in the 9 ar what will be the unit i missed the unit here the unit will be in newton because all the units are in in the si unit now we will discuss that if then like the superposition theorem so if four equal points charge all the point charges are equal are of 20 micro coulomb in the free space 20 micro coulomb in the free space p1 is equal to 0 0 0 from the this one you can see this is the p1 and the value is 0 0 next p2 Four zero zero, so four zero zero means it is it is only in the x axis. Y z is zero. P two is equal to sorry P three is equal to four four zero four four zero and P four is equal to zero four zero P four P four is equal to zero four zero. So there is no nothing on the z axis, but We have to find the force on the Q five whose value is zero 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 three. So, what are the step? So, write the position vectors of any two charges. So, we have to take, we have to calculate the force on this, and its value is two hundred micro coulomb, and all the charges are. Twenty micro coulomb. We will add all the force with this line as drawn in the first one. So write down the position vector of two point charges. We have already written all the position vector. Calculate the distance vector between them. So first, p p one to p three, p two to p three. Sorry, p five. P three to P five and P four to P five. We have to calculate all the position vector. Then, so how to write the position vector? So what is R P one, R P two, R P three, and R P four? We have to take the value of R P one. R P one means zero 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 means this is final value is. Three a z minus zero, so the distance is three a z. Similarly, R P two. This final value is three a z because only z axis zero zero three. Zero zero three means three a z only. And what is the value of this minus four? A x. So like this, we can write what is R P three three A Z minus four A x minus four A y. What is P four? P four is equal to three A Z three A Z minus four A y. Like this, we got all the point. 
now we know the formula and what is the total force using the superposition theorem using the superposition theorem force of 1p plus force of 2p plus force of 3p and force of 4p so if we add all we calculate the individually 1 1 1 1 for what is f1p f1p is equal to q1 qp by 4 pi epsilon r 1 p square a r q1 for this one q1 qp 4 pi epsilon r 1 p square we have already calculated for 1 p in the previous section into a r if you want you can keep it as a r if you want you can cal keep it as the uh, you can also calculate the value of the a r also F3P, F4P. So, according to the superposition, total force is equal to the summation of the four forces. So, the value will come like minus 1.7AX minus 1.7AY plus 1.7AZ Newton. So, this is the value we will get after solving the total. So, this is an example of the superposition theorem similarly we can discuss the another one calculate the electric field e at point in the free space caused by a charge q nanocoulomb at n so we have a point p we have a point q and we are just the same type of problem next a volume charge density is expressed by the this value uh, calculate the total charge of x equal to minus 1 2 y is equal to 0 3 and z is equal to 5 to 6 so volume charge density rho b already we discussed in the last class charge per unit volume so what is the charge dq is equal to rho v dv so rho b is equal to known as the volume charge density and here the value is given as 10 z square x sin pi y so we can write volume is equal to dx dy and dz so this is a what is the value of x x is my uh, 1 to 2 not minus 1 to 2 what is the y value 0 to 3 and what is the z value 3 to 3.6 and so first we will if we uh, make the integration we will get 62.57 coulomb so this is the example of the volume charge density next if we discuss about the electric field next uh, what comes in our mind is the magnetic field so why what is magnetic field so magnetic field means so magnetic field means the area where we where if we keep any magnet it will feel some forces this is called the magnetic field and while we are discussing about the magnetic field the another important term comes in our mind is the magnetic flux density what is magnetic flux density magnetic flux density means the flux flux means if we keep one north pole here and another south pole here there is some imaginary lines from north pole to south pole in the area where it can experience a force this means if we keep a unit north pole here it will take a path to meet at the south pole so this path is known as the magnetic field magnetic flux and magnetic flux per unit area is known as the magnetic flux density if we discuss about the magnetic flux density the another important term will come into our mind is the magnetic susceptibility what is magnetic susceptibility in electromagnetism the magnetic susceptibility is wrote by the xi is a measure of how much material 
will become magnetized in the applied magnetic field. We know iron, nickel and cobalt are the magnetic material. So if we keep any iron in a magnetic field, how much magnetic uh, property it will take is known as the magnetic susceptibility. It is the ratio of the magnetization. What is magnetization? Magnetic moment per unit volume to the magnetic field H. So this is the one important thing in the magnetomotive force. And here also another important thing is the permeability. So what is permeability? Permeability is same as the uh, how much uh, magnetization it will get is called the permeability of the medium. If the permeability is greater than 1, it is a paramagnetic materials like iron. If mu1 is equal to uh, less than 1, it is called the diamagnetic material and if mu1 equals to 0, it is called the non-magnetic material. So, these are some examples of the magnetic material. So, next important thing what we will discuss in the magnetic field, the like as we told that the electric field is based on the Coulomb's law, the magnetic field is based on the Biosabhat's law. What is Biosabhat's law? The magnetic field intensity due to current element IDL is dH at the point. So, if there is a current carrying conductor, there will be some force on the, on the area and this area is say P. In a certain distance, it will feel some force and this is P and according to the Biosabhat's law, the electric field, sorry, the magnetic field intensity dH is directly proportional to the I into dL. What is I? Current flowing through an elementary length dL. Again, the dH is directly proportional to the sine theta. Sine theta is the angle between the current element and the length of joining and dH is uh, inversely proportional to the 1 by r square. r is the square or r is the distance between the current carrying element at that point. And if we, uh, if we allow the three main equations, we, we by combining the above three, we will get that the dH is directly proportional to the I dL. I dL sin theta by R square. Okay, so we got here that uh, dH is directly proportional to I dL. dH is directly proportional to the sin theta. dH is directly proportional, inversely proportional to the I R I by R square. So by combining the above three, we can get dH is directly proportional to I dL sin theta by r square. So, if we are want to remove the proportionality constant, we can write the dH is equal to I dL sin theta by 4 r square and this is the uh, total incentive if we want to calculate the total intensity due to this magnetic field is the B is equal to mu integration of the I dL sin theta by 4 I square. Why? Because we know B is equal to mu into H. B is equal to mu into H. So, B is equal to mu integration of I dL sin theta 4 pi R square. And always it is in a closed path. As the current is flowing in a closed path, so it is in the closed path. And what is H? H is equal to integration of I dL sin theta 4 pi R square. We have discussed this. So, and again we know that the dL sin theta, we can also write like this dL cross AR. We know A cross B, if we multiply two vector with a cross product, it will be A B sin theta. 
So from here we can write that dl sin theta is equal to we can write it dl into 1 into sin theta. 1 means the unit vector and here the unit vector is ar and this is the dl. So dl cross ar we are taking this dl cross ar. So what is h? h is equal to i dl cross ar 4 by r square and this is an integration in a closed path. So this is a very very important thing in the magnetic field that magnetic field always uh, obeys the bio subverts law. I will discuss this later. Next we will discuss about the electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field means the field which is changing with the variable which the variable of the current. You can see this is the current the green one which is moving continuously is the this is the current and this blue one is the electric field it is also continuously changing. So what is time varying field? Time varying fields are produced due to the accelerated charges or time varying current. Time varying current means the alternative current which is changing with time only. You can see from here that it is changing the current and the blue one is the field which is also changing continuously. So a time varying field, a time varying field is produced by a time varying magnetic field and a time varying electric field. So it is an, sorry, it is a, it, if an elect, time varying magnetic field and time varying electric field both are working together, it will create a time varying electric field which is known as the electromagnetic field. For example, we are giving in a synchronous motor, we are giving the current which is alternative in nature or an induction motor. We are giving one current which is alternative in nature and the induction motor is also rotating. So the magnetic field is the rotating field as well as the electric field which is due to the AC current is also a electric field. So as both are time varying they will create an alternating time varying fields. So the first this concept was introduced by the Michael Faraday and it was theoretically introduced, the mathematical equations is introduced by the Jack Clark Maxwell. That's why Michael Faraday and Jack Clark Maxwell are known as the fathers of the electrical engineering. After uh, getting, after the invention of the electric this electromagnetic field, the change in the electric field becomes huge. The motors and the generators all works under the electromagnetic, uh, on the base of the electromagnetic principle. So what is electromagnetic induction? A changing magnetic field, a changing magnetic field, intensity and movement will induce and electromagnetic force. So while there is a change in the electric field intensity movement it will cause an electromagnetic uh, force E is directly proportional to the d phi by dt. It is also known as the Faraday's law. In a closed electric circuit a changing magnetic field will produce an electric current and as there is a change in the electric field there will be a change in the due to the field if the path is closed it will create some electric current. So E is equal to what is E? E is equal to minus N d phi by dt. So this is the Faraday's law. So what is Faraday's first law? If 
there is any change in the magnetic field of coil of wire it will cause an emf to induced in the coil the emf induced is called the induced emf and if the circuit if the path is closed the current will flow or a circular current will induce to flow in the closed path this is called called as the induced current so how we can change the magnetic field magnetic field by can be changed by changing the magnet towards or away from the coil if there is a current flowing coil is there and if we move the magnet means north pole and south pole so there is a continuously changing it will creates and variable magnetic field next is the by moving the coil into or out of the magnetic coil if we want to change the electric field we are uh, say this is a coil this is a magnetic field we can take uh, using a piston we can take it in this is this is the coil we can take it inside or outside of the constant magnetic field this also creates a variable electromagnetic or rate of change in the electromagnetic field the third one by changing the area of a coil placed in the magnetic field the fourth which is the basically used in the motor by rotating the coil relative to the magnet the magnets are fixed generally in the motor the magnets or the electromagnets are created in the stator portion of the motor and stators are known as the static portion so it is fixed and we are rotating the coil inside the stator so what will happen it will also create some magnet change in magnetic field under this four uh, four conditions there will be some in emf will be induced so this is the faraday's second law the faraday's second law states about the uh, emf the magnitude of the emf in the electric flux so it states that the magnitude of the emf induced in the coil and it is equal to the rate of change it will equal to the rate of change of the flux linkage with the coil so what is the flux linkage means rate of flux linkage so e is directly proportional to the d phi dt so faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states if any coil experiences a change in magnetic flux then emf is induced in it and e is directly proportional to the d phi by dt or we can write it as e minus d phi by dt if number of turns is equal to n it will be e minus n d phi by dt this law is also known as the lenz law what is the meaning of the lenz law lenz law is tells that the direction of the induced emf will be such that it will oppose its cause what is the cause of the induced emf rate of change of the electric flux so if the rate of change of flux is one side the induced emf will be in the opposite side so lenz law states that the cause opposes every cause of producing it as i told the direction of the induced emf will be such that it will be oppose the change in the electric flux that causes the emf so this is the known as the lenz law you can see this coil is moving and the flux is also so there will be and you can see the flux is moving and the coils are also moving so there will be a change in the induced emf and it will causes some it will causes some electric field to produce in it
so faraday does the experiment it is the very first experiment and primitive also he took a con uh, permanent north it he has done in this experience before 200 year sorry before 400 years 1831 he took one magnet which can move to and fro into a coil so he uh, check that if it moves the north pole to south pole and it close the path and he found that some current is flowing into the uh, coil he changed the north pole and south pole reverse the direction and he saw the current is flowing in the opposing direction so this induced current is set up by the induced emf he has done this experience but by using the two current carrying conductor also changing the current in the right hand coil induced the emf which induces a current this is a current carrying conductor he gives creates some emf and he keeps another coil nearby which some induced emf is uh, induced current flows through this so this is the faraday's experiment and the induced current is depends on the di by dt and the till now the induction motor works only on this principle and from here we got the we got the maxwell's fourth equation which is very very important that the phi is equal to b dot d s what is phi phi is the electric field and we already know e is equal to minus d phi by dt what is phi b dot d s what is b b is equal to we have discussed what is b b is the magnetic flux density so b is the magnetic flux density so b dot d s is equal to magnetic flux so phi is equal to b dot d s now again what is the phi phi is equal to magnetic flux so e is equal to my in induced emf is equal to minus d phi dt d integration of b dot d s by dt now what is the d s by dt d s is equal to surface area by dt we can write it again we know that the e is equal to e dot dl we got it from the electric field that the potential depends on the electric field intensity into the length we have discussed in the last class that the v is equal to v is equal to potential and potential is in the closed path and emf is in the open path so e is equal to e dot dl so if we equate the both equation we got integration of e dot dl is equal to db uh, integration of db ds by dt this is a perfect example of the electric field and magnetic field working together for any type of motors now by applying the stokes theorem we can write integration of e dot dl stokes theorem is used to change the uh, to change the level so from line integration we are changing into the surface integration so grant cross e ds so grant cross e ds we can write in the next line grant cross e ds is equal to db ds by dt so if we equate the both thing we can get grant cross e is equal to db by dt this is the relation between the electric field and the magnetic field in the case of a electromagnetic induction and this is known as the maxwell's fourth equation or the vector form of the this is the vector form of the faraday's law so today's class we have discussed about the field so field are basically four types one is electric field one is mag um, basically three types electric field 
magnetic field and electromagnetic field electromagnetic field is basically again two types time uh, constant or time independent and time varying field we have discussed about the electric field some problems magnetic field then we have discussed about the biosabat's law we have discussed about the faraday's law in the scalar form as well as the vector form so up to this is today's class and thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates